And no one, but I don't think that when somebody else posts it, it's, you know, it's always just, we're hypercritical of ourselves. And I'm hypercritical. Yeah, I, you're hypercritical of me, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, you're the only one. Everyone else, I'm like, ah, they're just human. Let them do it, whatever. They're fine, I'm learning a lot. But with you, I, I'm really zeroing in on imperfections. I'm glad. All right. Hello, everybody. So this is the third time that we record this intro, which is fine because the podcast went fantastic. I actually hit record uh, before we got into anything good. But uh, I am talking with Professor Travis today. I've known him for 12 years. Um, I'm just starting to tolerate him. (laughs) Uh, But it's been a great 12 years. It sounds like I'm not going to see him anymore, but I'm going to leave to work in just a couple minutes here. But we had a great conversation about his book, as well as just sort of the goals that we have moving into next year. Yeah, on to the topic of your book. Before we talk about it in depth, I just kind of wanted to say uh, it is a great book. I enjoyed it, especially the part that I'm in. <laughs> but I did want to ask, why did you write a book? What, what was sort of your um, intention behind it? Right, so I found jujitsu at an age when I was not very motivated or had very high aspirations to do much with my life. I was pretty young and, and that's understandable because a lot of people don't know what they're going to do at that time. But I knew that college wasn't really an option and the military probably was and that was as far as I could see. And, and when I found jujitsu, it just kind of lit a fire in me that sort of indirectly led me to other avenues of education. <clears throat> I started reading more. I started um, a lot of personal development and I fell in love with not just the art form of jujitsu, but teaching and sharing it and, and witnessing other people have that same kind of transformation. So without giving away too much of the book, that's, that's kind of the inspiration you know, behind it and everything that I um, was forced to become. So it's, it's a lot of those stories. And uh, I didn't know how well it would be received. I wanted to do it anyway. I was terrified about the idea of writing a really (laughs) terrible book, but I also knew that that's a poor reason not to do something. It's just because of the fear you have. And, you know, luckily it's been pretty well received from the the small group that's read it. It's been, um, I don't know if that's just my friends being nice, but (laughs) if if it is is no good, then no one's been honest enough to tell me that. So I I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I agree. I I think it's pretty good. Um, If you haven't bought it, go buy it. Uh, I'll link it below. It's a pretty great book. Um, I I think it's relatable, especially because you're not um, like a distant imagination for a lot of people. It's like a lot of people own their own businesses. A lot of people go through their own uh, their own issues. And I think from what I've heard whenever I've talked to people about it is they relate to you on on those uh, on those issues. Even if they're not the same issues, they they find themselves uh, relating on the fact that you went through something and then you accomplished something after that. So I did want to talk about, I know you said you didn't want to give too much away about the book, but throughout the book, (laughs) I I know um, throughout the book, there's the continuity of coming back to um, knowing your why. And I I think the most uh, one that people saw the most was whenever you were talking about learning Portuguese, whenever you went to Brazil. So you had met uh, your now wife, uh, Coach Ingrid. (laughs) And, um, she was sort of your why, your reason behind wanting to learn Portuguese. You mentioned that you struggled at first. Uh, you kind of felt like you were going to give up at one point because you didn't have a purpose behind it. But then whenever you did meet her, she was sort of your driving force um, behind learning Portuguese. So now looking back on that, how does that apply to your everyday? Um, knowing your why and then um, going forward with your goals into 2021, because I know we're talking about uh, our goals uh, now so that we go have them whenever we go into 2021. What is your why? What, what, what's your driving force right now? Well, if you decide to, I think anyone becomes a business owner, you're, you're in the service business, whether you realize it or not. You're there to serve other people and give back whatever, um, whether it be a, a tangible product or service that you are involved in. And in my case, it's the service of martial arts and 
character enrichment, whether it be for kids and adults. Uh, so I, I consistently need to come back to the responsibility that is sort of tied up in that idea. Because any, I think anything that you do long enough, you can become um, accustomed to. It doesn't matter how exciting it is. It doesn't matter if it's your dream job. It's your dream job until you get it. And then whether, if you don't consistently um, invest time and gratitude for what you have, then you can uh, become jaded. You can get on that kind of hedonic treadmill, they call it. And so for me, I feel that the responsibility of what we do is great. I really think we help people. I think we help kids as young as two years old. I think we help uh, adults. I think we help grandparents, whether they're on the mat training or they're just there supporting their grandchildren, all the students and family members involved. And I can forget that at times, right? I can, I can get caught up in the business and the, the nature of like, oh, trying to grow and trying to uh, increase the bottom line and, you know, all the kind of behind the scenes thing, things that go along with it. And I'm so grateful that enough people are consistently coming up and saying, man, you've really helped me with this. Or mm -hmm. my kid is, I couldn't get my child to do their homework. And now they, they want to do more homework on top of the homework that you're making them do. And that keeps things in the perspective for me that what we're doing is a really important. So it's rejuvenating in that sense. So my why is that the ripple effect of what we do uh, is powerful. And I need to bring that motivation with me to the school every day, whether I'm having an off day or not, doesn't really matter because that responsibility is still there. Yeah, I, I, I think coming from you, it, it's, it's really awesome to hear that because I know you've told us, us as in your students, that um, at least on par with our martial arts goals was you were always pushing us. Um, and I think my... The nearest memory I have of you doing that is Worlds last year. Is the first time that I was eligible to compete, and you were like, "Oh man, you have to do it." It's I'd been training for ten years at the time, which is a lot, <laughs> but um, you were like, "There's no reason you shouldn't do it." And it was the first time I'd left Texas for a competition, so I was definitely nervous. Um, but I, I kind of had that why in my head, like you, you mentioned now in in your book, it was like, "Well, there's nothing that I'm gonna lose by." going forward with this. So my why was I wanted to get better, um, not just as a martial artist, but as a person. So doing something that's difficult. And I think that's something that you and I talk about a lot is like wanting to do something difficult. I mean, you did the, the Navy SEAL-esque training camp that was like, what, three, four days? Five days. Or longer, five days. <laughs> Didn't want to undersell it. But uh, that, that's awesome. But now, uh, we didn't mention this, but you just had surgery on your arm. You, you had a torn bicep from competing, which I know sucks. Uh, and then we talked about it like a couple weeks ago where you, you kind of felt that way. You're like, oh, man, um, seeing all these other people compete, seeing the people that I compete against winning, um, that kind of made you feel like there was something more that you can do, but you had the limitation of your, your arm. So... I know that you're still at All In, uh, still training a lot, which is crazy. I, I do want to put up some videos here, if I can, of you doing like the, the one-arm drills that you do, which are awesome. But now, um, personally, for all your goals next year, uh, probably martial arts related, w what's your mindset going into, into those? Because I know surgery is difficult, not being able to train is difficult, even though you, you're still beating up on kids. Um, What's sort of your mindset <laughs> uh, going into 2021? I keep beating up on the children with my, with my good arm so that I can boost my confidence. I will say one thing you said, I'm, I continue to work out. That's half because I want to make sure I stay in shape and half to preserve my sanity. Because I, 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 and I, I don't know if that's, um, if everyone's like that, but I, I think if you have an active lifestyle, whether it's exercise or, just outdoor activities or martial arts, whatever it is, when you are sort of sidelined from activity for a little while, it can really, it can really mess with your, your positive mentality. I know for the first week they said I wasn't even allowed to sweat. And um, it's amazing how much our, our emotions will um, 
move up and down just because of our limited physical ability. So I have to go exercise. And even, and even though like moving forward with goals. So yeah, so I, it was such a kind of freak accident. I just went for a takedown, like a wrestling style takedown that I've done. I don't know how many times before with zero consequence. <laughs> and for whatever reason, at this angle, my arm just popped like a rubber band that tendon ripped right off the bone, five centimeters. And, um, Thanks for the, the graphic explanation. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to do it. I want people to watch this and go, that's, you know, but it did. It, it just popped right off. And so they sorted back in. Now it's, um, now I've got like a before and after arm of like Captain America. This is the yeah. <laughs> arm that, you know, is still doing well. It's getting stronger, but, you know, I don't think, I was talking to another black world about this and we were talking about injuries. We, we both came, kind of came to the same conclusion that injuries really are a blessing. And it's not that we want them or, or try to get injured. It's just that every, every injury results in a positive road ahead in terms of how you have to one, deal with the in, injury emotionally and how you have to adapt the jujitsu in order for you to continue to train. And that really comes with having the right attitude, which is not easy to embrace. But so back to your question, like kind of moving forward into the new year, I want to get strong again. I want to be able to compete. But I just had to shift my some of my competition goals, knowing that I'm, I'm sidelined from competition for a while with the injury. But I'm also excited about how I'm going to develop focusing on my training with my non-dominant hand, right, which is uh, – it's not easy. So for 23 years without any type of major injury, I've played right-handed, which means my dominant grips are with my right hand. My dominant choking grip is my right hand. And now everything is left-handed. And I've only ever played with that. I've never been forced to do it for five months straight. So um, but I had a similar incident when I, when I hurt my back. Yeah. I was really limited in, in my flexibility. And so I had to play a different game. And man, I learned, I came to understand so much more about the game during that time. So that's where my head's at. I still have, now that doesn't mean I'm just pure positivity. Like, you know, just, you know, if I pop the other arm, oh, that's great because now, I <laughs> you know, um, I don't want to be hurt and it is a bummer. The, the, the human side of me still like throws little fits on its own. Um, but the part of me that knows better and believes in something bigger is optimistic about what I'm going to learn during this time. I, I think that's awesome, uh, especially approaching it that way, especially something um, like a large injury like, like you've had, is saying like, okay, what can I gain from this situation? And I think that's a great mentality to approach anything with. It's like just about everything that requires work is, can suck at some point. And I think... Um, You'd agree with that on that for just about um, anything, working out, training. There are moments of that that are going to suck. Um, but I think it's moving past those and being able to analyze the situation and say, like, okay, I know I'm going to gain something from this uh, that I can apply whenever things are better. Uh, and that's just relating it to jiu-jitsu and training and all that stuff. But I think that's something that you can bring to any situation. We talked a little bit about... Um, your injury, your goals moving forward into 2021. Um, I also wanted to talk about sort of your vision for the future of Team Tuck and all of your students. Um, so I know you, you've grown so much uh, the past, what is it now, 16, 14 years of Team Tuck history? 15, okay. So over those 15 years, it's gone from garage and now to a huge warehouse. Um, so I'm not necessarily talking about like the building, what's your, what are your goals for the building, but your goals for the team. Um, I know there's kind of been affiliation changes and now we're kind of our, our own uh, thing, but what, what are your goals? What do you see the team doing? What do you see your students accomplishing? Um, not necessarily in just 2021, but in the future, moving forward. So <clears throat> I think a lot of it is just becoming a better version of what we're doing now. I'm very happy with our kids program and the changes that we've implemented over the past couple of years in terms of really teaching the kids 
um, the, the character values that we focused on. I think you always get that just through martial arts in general, but we've put together a system that's hyper-focused on these character traits, respect, discipline, focus, listening, um, traits that you want to apply, that you can apply to life off the maps. And that is really, I think that has to be the long-term goal of a, of a martial arts school, or at least I think it should be, because <clears throat> reaching a high skill set without becoming a completely different and better person uh, is, is kind of a shame, right? I wouldn't want to create a black belt who could tap everyone on the mat, but lacks character, character and integrity. And furthermore, I want them to be able to utilize these skills to get the job they want, to go to the college that they want, and to basically create the life that they want. So I want to keep exploring better ways to add that type of value to our student base moving forward. I want to continue uh, to grow. I always tell our instructors that you can never stop sharpening the saw. You can never stop improving at your craft, which is why we, we have other people come in. You know, we have uh, world champion black belts come in and teach and share. And we travel, we continue to compete. I don't think we've missed, and this might be the first year that we've missed the actual world championships because I don't know if yeah. they're going to have one because of COVID, but being a part of those experiences and connecting with the highest level and bringing it back is also very important. So it's one thing to, to have the character part and to let the technical growth slide. And I, I really believe in always bringing up both. I want our technical level to continue to grow. I want our competitors to continue to compete at a very high level at all belts. And I want to make sure that the type of people that we become, uh, that our character is representative of the values that we that we uh, have here at the school. But I'm happy with I'm happy with a lot of what we've done over the years. So it's not like a 180 that I'm looking for. It's just to continue to improve and, and find better ways to to train, teach, and pass on these values to our teammates. Okay. And then final, final thing. Um, I think it's on track with everything that we've been talking about. Um, sort of one of your goals for 2021. It doesn't have to be necessarily jujitsu related or martial arts related. It can be just anything. So mine just so happens to be jujitsu related because that's all I do aside from school. And I'm not thinking about school right now. It's Thanksgiving break. Uh, I don't know when this will go up. I'm going fine, people. You should <laughs> um, uh, so I don't know when this will go up. Hopefully around Thanksgiving so that makes sense. But um, it's definitely getting my purple belt. But further than that is competing at purple belt. So I know uh, saying this is going to cement me to competing. But <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's why I'm saying this. And, and I encourage everyone else to do this too. Um, not necessarily make a video of you saying it, but write it down somewhere. Uh, so there is a competition. I think it is like the second or third week, not third week, because that's probably Christmas, of December, uh, grappling games. And I would like to compete as Purple Belt just because I think moving into next year, um, it'll just give me a good frame of reference as well as um, just help give me the the motivation I need. Not even if I win, but just doing something that makes me uncomfortable, uh, kind of seeking out that discomfort. So I would like to compete a lot more in, uh, in next year. I was going to do that this year, but they won't let me compete IBGF anywhere. But um, next year, definitely, I think the goal stays the same. But I want to challenge myself in the next couple weeks with that tournament and compete as Purple Belt. Uh, Nogi is not is weird because they're like separating it by years of experience. And just because I'm, like, I'm a blue belt, but that's 12 years experience. <laughs> um, I'm on that 20 year, 20 year path. <laughs> but so that's mine. Uh, and I, you had us communicate those to you anyway. So um, I'm sure that's something that you kind of had an idea that I, I wanted to do. But now you, uh, I haven't read your goal sheet yet. 
what what is something that you want to accomplish next year? Oh, good question. I mean, there, there's quite a few. I'm trying to think of the one. I, I think I, I, I'm not going to give you the answer you always ask me to give, which is a simple yeah. one. <laughs> By the time I talk, I realize, oh, here's something better to say. So, <laughs> oh, what what what's your favorite book? Well, there's this one. Are you asking about the genre? Are you asking about my favorite page from a certain book? Really? Yeah, I can never get a straight answer out of you. But go ahead, tell tell me. Tell me the three goals that you'd like to complete. <laughs> right now, I want to regain strength in my injured arm, which has been, besides being frustrating, it's been kind of fun to watch my shriveled, limp, soft arm become like uh, what it was before. Like it's getting strong every day. So I'm, I'm motivated by rehab, if that's like uh, – not maybe the, the most exciting goal, but it's like rehab. That's what I really want to do. I'm being very, I've been very disciplined with my rehab on my arm. Like every day I'm, I'm, I'm very focused on, on watching it grow. And I have not been as disciplined with some other elements of my life as I have been in the past because I was incredibly motivated as a young business owner when i was getting started and i was poor like living you know with my dad and teaching out of the garage and never been hungrier in my life to create something that, that i could say i kind of built not on my own because everyone gets help but I, that i built for my vision and now <clears throat> that the school has grown and is doing well and got a lot of really great experiences cornering in the UFC like over a dozen times and competing and watching students compete at very high levels and, and building a big successful school with a lot of students and affiliates and watching them grow. Uh, all that, as great as that is, I, I feel like I've been, my, my mentality is a little bit less hungry. And I think that's a normal thing to go through. I think progress, you're either, it's like you're on a, you're on a bike on a hill, you're either pedaling up or you're rolling down. It's hard to just plateau, but I think I've somewhat, and I, and I don't want to sound like things aren't going great because they, they really are, but I've, I've sort of gotten a little comfortable and I want to, I want to reignite uh, that fire and that kind of discipline for, um, for the business, for my own personal growth and and just the things that I did early on to become successful, I want to do that again at a, at a higher level. So individual goals, I don't know about competition because I don't know when I can compete again, right? So I'm hoping yeah. by the end of next year I can do that. I have some financial goals and then I have some like a student count goals. I got some goals for the competitors, but I think it's more like I want to become a more disciplined version of who I am. I think that's fair. It's not, it's not a, like you said, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not just one thing that I was looking for, but I, I think that's a really, I'll give you one. Okay. I, I, did, I did that. Um, I did that five day seal fit event. They have another yeah. one. That's a two day. I got to make sure they still have it. I haven't checked it, but it's called Kokoro. It's like 50 hours of nonstop Navy seal movement time. It's like hell week, but instead of five days, it's two days. I want to do that. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll hold you to that. Hold it. Hold me to mine. And then uh, I think that's a good, a good way to leave this off. Um, those of you watching, hopefully it's a ton of you, uh, a huge audience. <laughs> Set your goals, uh, especially this time of year. Um, moving into next year, uh, you should have sort of a framework of what you want to accomplish. Thank you, Professor, for joining me today. Uh, I'll link all of the stuff that I said during our, our conversation below. Read his book. Uh, go watch the video that we made uh, last week. And then watch all the other ones we made because I'm the only one that will go on his podcast. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, it's a really good podcast. He interviews a lot of awesome people. But that's it. Thank you, Professor. Have a great day. Bye-bye.